Welcome back to another Power BI 3 minute tip. If you're liking these quick Power BI tutorials, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell for more content. In today's video, I'm going to show you a really cool technique, and that's how you can set a default slicer selection. I see this being asked on the Power BI message boards all the time, and surprisingly a lot of people answer that it can't be done in Power BI yet. Uh, but there is a way that you can do this just by writing a little bit of DAX. So as you can see in this example, I'm only showing July data. Uh, to give you a quick look at my data, I have data from this month, July 2018, going back through June, May, and April. So I have this calculated column to determine if it's the current month. Um, it's actually this code right here, so you can copy that down if you want. Um, and going back, it says if it's one month ago, two months ago, or three months ago. So using this log logic, we're able to get whether or not it's in the current month or not. And using a measure that I have written, I am defaulting uh, to the current month's data. So when nothing is selected on this slicer, it will default to current month. So if you click on current month, it'll show current month as well. If you click on one month ago, it'll show one month ago data. Or if you now select two months ago, it shows one month ago and two months ago. But when you get rid of the slicer selection, it sh only shows the current month, which is different than how Power BI usually treats charts. And that's basically, if we were just to throw in the actual amount, not the measure, it will default to show all of the data. But then if we selected something, then it shows that much data. But if we take that away, it shows all the data. So since we only want to show the current month's data, we can do that with our custom measure. And to give you another look at what that looks like, it's just showing us July 2018 data. So that's what we're after here. So it's actually pretty easy to implement and it's only a few lines of code. So let's go ahead and dive into it. I'm going to go ahead and delete the default selection. And we're going to create our own measure. And before we start, I want to show you this code again, um, because this is important um, that we had grouped our data. So I wanted to put it in bins that we could then call upon. So go ahead and uh, make this calculate column if you want. And we will go ahead and start creating our measure. So the way in which we are going to determine if something is selected is actually kind of funny. So we're going to go ahead and call this default selection. And we are going to set this equal to an if statement. And we are going to check if the number of selections is less than the total number of selections. And the way we do that is we use the count rows function, which counts the number of rows in a table. We're counting the distinct of the all selected date range. And actually, I'm going to get rid of this if, and I just want to show you what this is actually going to look like. So we're going to count the rows of the distinct all selected date range. So all selected will filter down your data just to what is selected in the current context. And then you're taking a distinct, so just give me the distinct rows, and then we're counting it. So if we go ahead and click OK, we can throw this into a card here. That card is pretty big for whatever reason. We're going to throw this into a card here. And you see that right now, since nothing is selected, there are four selections. But if you click on one of these, you now have one selection. Or if you control click and you have two, you now have two selections. So let's create one more measure. We are going to do all selections. And we're going to set this equal to basically the same thing. It's count rows distinct all date range. So the difference between this and the last one is now we're using all instead of all selected. So it's going to get rid of the filter on whatever you're selecting and it will always return you all of the different results. So let's go ahead and click OK. And let's throw in one more card over here and throw in all selections. So you see that no matter what we have selected, it's always four because that's the total number of selections that we have. If we control click, we now have three selections, but we still have four total selections. So this is really important because we're going to have to see if our total number of selections is less than our like total selections that we have to choose from. So using this logic, let's go ahead and add to this default selection measure. So here's where if comes in. So we're going to say if count rows distinct all selected date range is less than the same thing but with the all. And we are doing that because we want to see if we have selected less than the total. Then we are going to want to, I think I missed a parenthesis. Then let's just say for this sake, we just want to give it a 
or we'll say we'll give it the sum of the data amount. Or if it's not the case, I think I missed another parenthesis too. So if that's not the case, as in that would mean that the count rows of the all selected is greater than or equal to the total number, we will give it a 100. So let's see how that works. That's not supposed to be there anymore. So now that we have three selections, we are showing the sum of the sales amount. But if we have four selections, meaning all of them um, are unselected or all of them are selected, we have four selections now compared to our four for the total. We then are going to 100, just like we had said. So using that logic, we can then throw an if into the false condition and basically saying if the selected value of the date range equals current month, this is one of the, uh, this is what we want our default value to be. We can say sum of data amount. But if it doesn't fall into this category, let's give it a blank. And that's actually our entire measure. So we'll go over this in just a second. But you can see that when uh, nothing is selected, we're still defaulting to the current month. Or then we select one and two months ago, and we get that much data, but we get rid of our filters and we default to the current month. It's also good to note that if you select all four, you still only get the current month because now you've made four selections uh, of your total of four, which if you recall, four is not less than four. So it will go to, um, it'll go to our false condition, which is just looking for current month. So you had to step through this again. We're taking all of our um, selections into consideration. And if we have less than the total number of selections possible, then we want to show the actual sum of the amount for each of those selections. If we have the same number or greater of the total number of selections, which in this case means we've selected all of the choices or we've selected none of the choices, then we want to show the sum of the data amount for the current month, but we want blank for everything else meaning our default value is based on whatever we give it here, and we wanna show blank for every other uh, selection. So that's basically the entire measure. And just to show you again, we can get rid of this and it'll keep that default measure or one month ago. And we can totally change this as if we want. So let's say we want one month ago. That's what we want our default to be. So in case we get rid of this, we now have our uh, June data instead of July. We can select current month. We can select three months ago. But when we get rid of it, we only show June data. So that way you can set whatever default value you want to set. And it's a really handy trick in case you have something that you need to show the current month or anything of the sort. So I hope you really liked the video. Uh, if you did, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next Power BI three minute tip.